Hello, I'm Chris Slisher, and welcome to Turning of the Wheel, an intelligent, lively discussion about astrology, art, and spiritual adventure. Timing is everything, and as the great wheel turns, we are best prepared when we are best informed. Join me as I explore concepts that allow us to broaden our view of the world. You'll hear interesting topics, meet fascinating guests, and discover who you really are. Using the time-tested practices of astrology, you'll learn how to accept change as the great wheel of life turns. Astrology, art, and spiritual adventure on Turning of the Wheel TV with Chris Flisher. Hey, welcome to Turning of the Wheel. This is a show about astrology, art, and spiritual adventure, and today I'm going to talk about astrology because it's one of my favorite topics. It's a fascinating divination tool, and the more you know about it, the more you will understand about why astrology truly works. And there's a little bit of information that's missing. Most of us, all of us know our, our sun sign because we all know what time of year we were born. But there's an extra piece of information that if you knew ahead of time and you were reading your daily horoscope in the newspaper or the website or wherever you go, you would have a lot more accuracy and what you read might actually begin to make sense. Because granted, astrology gets a bad rap. When you go to the newspaper and you look up your sign and you're like Virgos and it says, Virgo, you're going to have a good day today, you say to yourself, how can every Virgo in the world have a good day? Or how can every Aquarius have a great day or a bad day for that matter? And this just isn't accurate. Part of the reason is that it's too broad of a pool of people that they're drawing on when they do that. There are aspects to that that are true, but it's too large of an area. So we need to granularly bring that in and make it more granular. And how we do that is by knowing the time of birth. Now we all know what day we're born, and most of us know where we were born, but not everyone knows the time of birth. Now the birth time is usually on the birth certificate, but if it isn't, ask your mother, I'm pretty sure that she was there, and she will know, or if your father will, somebody in your family will know about the time that you were born. It doesn't have to be precise, but it needs to be within a two hour window. Because the sun is on the horizon at the time that you're born, and when that, where the sun is on that spectrum will determine the sign in which your rising sign is located. Now, the Earth is on a rotation. It turns one degree every four minutes. So in two hours, it's going to turn 30 degrees on the 360 degree scale, which is 30 times 12 equals 360 degrees, which is the logical area of the circle. So in that time, in 120 minutes, you're going to get a 30 degree sweep, which will be 30 degrees Virgo, 30 degrees Aries, 30 degrees Sagittarius, depending upon the time of day. When you know that sign, you will know another data point that allows you to figure out the depth and the granularity of your actual birth reading. So let's, for example, I'm in Aries and my rising sign is Virgo. So on any day of the week, I would read, or a month, or whenever you read your astrology, I would read what it means to be an Aries for that week, the prediction, and what it is for Virgo. And I would put those two together and I would get a composite uh, package of information where if one wasn't right, the other would be. And that's exactly how it works. When you put the two signs together, you form a composite reading that gives you the accuracy for the week. And this is invariably true. It works every time. When I go through the weekly hor horoscopes that I write for the local newspaper, I can see exactly what's going to be happening based on how I run the charts for the time of the week ahead. I set the time and the clocks, I look at my charts, and I can see exactly where things are going to be. Based on the planets that are in certain areas of the chart, I can tell the likelihood of, of the theme that's going to be happening in your life that week. And astrology is a theme-based tool. It's not a precise tool. Now there are astrologers, and I would do the same thing sometimes, they may say, Today's a good day to close on a house, or today's a good day to, you know, try to have a baby. Today's a good day to buy a car. Today's maybe a good day to buy a lottery ticket. I can give you some of that precision, but more importantly, what you'd want to look at would be the theme. So the theme would be money, say, for example, with a lottery ticket. If you're buying a lottery ticket, you'd say, well, you know something? You're a Sagittarius. This week in December, or this week in, in April, or this week in March is a good time for you to go out and do something to do with money because you've got a significant amount of planets in that area of your chart, that part of your world, that part of your individual life. So that person might come back and they read it and a lot of my readers will look backwards at astrology because they'll say, hmm, that guy was right. You know something? This past week I did take out a loan or this past week I got a check in the mail. 
I was talking to a client the other day, and uh, she was a Leo, and uh, she was saying, this is a good example of how people don't quite understand how, to, how this information works out. And um, I was saying, well, you know, uh, Jupiter, Leos right now are going to be very fortunate because they have a lot of activity going on. And she says, when is my ship going to come in? And she was bemoaning that. But what she didn't realize is just before that, she had told me that she had just gotten tax relief from her tax bill, she had gotten money to buy a new car, and she had a grandson. And I'm like, what were you expecting? Were you expecting a pot of gold to fall out of the sky? She had an amazing amount of good luck. Now, if I said to you, uh, uh, you know, Taurus, expect to get money this week. And I'm, this is just for, you know, example. Taurus, you expect to get money this week. And you come to me the week after, you say, Chris, I didn't get any, I didn't get the, the you know, the big cha-ching you were talking about. And I say, well, let's go back and look at what happened. Did you get anything that, that was unusual this week? Well, I don't know. I got a, my grandfather sent me a check for, for $200 from my, you know, for, for, to help me out with my college expenses. And I said, there you go. That's the money. And they, I think the problem is, is that people expect to get really big, you know, a, a big results from what, what the astrology is talking about. That is not always the case. You have to be able to understand that there are magnitudes associated with the types of qualities and characteristics and events that happen in your life. Now, the reason I mention that is because if that person knew, the person I was talking about who got those three great things happen to them, if they knew their rising sign or their ascendant in their chart, they would be able to put the two together and they'd be able to say, huh, that makes sense. It was talking about, you know, something happening in my family, which would have been the arrival of the son, the birth, the child, the grandson. And then there was this thing about money from outside sources. Well, that outside sources is taxes, it's large organizational money. Outside money can be anything from insurance claims to, uh, to winning the lottery to, uh, you know, it can also be the opposite. It could be an overdue tax bill. So the, what the point I'm trying to make here is that if the theme of money is what we're talking about, the theme. We're not saying on Wednesday you're going to get a $5,000 check. You're going to get something in that time. That's what the theme's about. Now, when you know the rising sign, and the rising sign, as I said, is on the horizon at the time that you were born. Where was the sun? What sign was the sun in on the horizon when, when you were born? Okay? Now that changes every day. So it goes, the sun goes through all 12 signs throughout the course of the day. Okay? Because in that two-hour window, we have the earth moving one degree every four minutes. So every four minutes, the earth moves one degree on the 360-degree cycle. So by the time the day is over, that earth has turned the whole cycle and it's gone, spent two hours in each sign. When you know that sign, that can be as accurate as the sun sign. In many cases, it can be even more accurate. Now let me explain. As we age, okay, now supposing you're born in Aries, as you age and your rising sign is, is uh, Aquarius, let's say, as you age, you are going to become more like the Aquarius person outwardly to the world that who see you, people who view you, than you are the actual Aries person. That's not to say that you're not going to be that individual person um, always. If foundationally, you'll always be your sun sign. But what happens is that you become, as, because of, as a result of having this other sign in your chart, you take on those characteristics and you actually project that to the world. So people begin to see you as that. And the reason this is important is especially when it comes to matchmaking. Who doesn't love matchmaking? Most people who come to me to speak about astrology are here for two reasons. One for when am I going to fall in love and when am I going to get the money? Those are the two big things that people always want to know about astrology. Relationships and career, same thing. Relationships, love, money, career, same thing. So when they want to know that, one of the best ways to find a match for a person is to find out what your ascendant is, your rising sign, and that's based on the time of birth. And that, when it matches up with the sun or the moon of the other person in the other relationship, you have instant chemistry. It works every time. I've known many couples who find this to be incredibly true, even if their signs do not get along on the surface. Now, what do I mean by that? Each of the signs has an elemental characteristics. There's fire, air, earth, and water, okay? So, fire and water, you say, they don't go together. Earth and air don't go together, but fire and air goes together, 
and earth and water go together. You can see the natural chemistry of how those fit together because they're natural elements that seem to be adaptable. Fire feeds air. Water and earth, well, they do make mud, but that's okay. They still get together, and they can create bricks, so there's foundational qualities there. The point of the matter is, is that they fix, they do meet up. So if you have a rising sign in Gemini, an air sign, and you fall in love with somebody who's an Aquarius, who has a, who's an Aquarius, that's also an air sign, you've got air-to-air -air compatibility. They're going to have a very deeply rich intellectual conversation because they understand each other. This is very, very critical. This is why knowing the rising sign is critical. But the other point I want to make here is I said to you that as you age, you become more like your rising sign. The rising sign, or the ascendant as it's known in astrology, is, is kind of like the clothes you wear. It's the costume you wear. It's the skin you're in. It's the mask that you wear to the world. So the world may see you as in this light, as this kind of person. So think about it. The longer that you wear that costume, the longer you wear that mask, the longer you're in that skin, metaphorically and figuratively, the more comfortable you're going to be. You're more comfortable in your skin. Most people who are older are comfortable with who they are because they've lived longer. It's only when we're young and we're trying to figure out who we are that we have a hard time determining who our personality is. But as you get older and you've tested your boundaries and you see where you're going, you begin to become a composite of characteristics that you are stable and you're secure. I remember my grandfather, he always knew what he was doing. He always, and my father as well, always knew what they were doing. My mother as well, my grandmother as well, because they had been that person for a long time. And that is what it means to grow into your skin. You become more like that person. So knowing that, as you get older, it becomes more apparent that you sort of morph into that sign. And that piece of it is different from what your birth sign is. Now, the obvious question is, what happens if you're a Leo and you have a Leo rising sign? Very good question. You're going to have double Leo. First of all, you're going to be a very powerful person. And the Leo is a person who comes in and takes charge. Think of a lion entering a room. Leo is ruled by the sun, so they're going to come in and be a very dominant figure. Think of someone like a Bill Clinton who's got a lot of charisma and sort of sweeps up people in his, in his path. But then... Another case, we look at Barack Obama. He is a Leo as well, but he's got Aquarius on his ascendant. Big difference there because of, a, of that type of personality. Here we have two Leo people, but they have distinctly different characteristics and distinctly different styles. They may be effective, they may be confident, they may be bold, they may be um, you know, powerful, but that subtleness of that ascendant piece on the chart is where it happens. Now you say, how do I find out my ascendant? Well, good question. You seek an astrologer. You can go online and find it if you want to. There's several websites that will provide this information. And what they want from you is they want your birth time. And you're going to get your son. And when they know your birth time, they can run a cast, a whole series of your chart and all the planets that happen at that time of birth. And the way that works is that at the moment of birth, where the planets are fall into a, into a map, and I will show you this down the road at another, in another segment. The, the, the planets fall into a, a consider, what's considered to be a map or a chart. When you can see where those maps and the, and the planets in, those, in the chart are, then you know where your, your aspects are and your planets are. Now, I know this is some new language, and I'm trying to make it as easy as I possibly can for you, but the facts are there. So you reach, contact an astrologer, they can tell you what your ascendant is. If your ascendant is the same as your sun sign, you're going to be a, a double dose of that, of that sign, whether it's a Virgo or a Gemini or a Capricorn, whatever. You're going to be a double dose of that sign. But what you would do in that case is you'd try to find where the moon was when you were born. And when you know where the moon was, that serves the same purpose. It's another piece of information. So what I'm trying to say is instead of relying on one piece of information, what the sun sign is, rely on and augment that uh, characteristic with another data point. You know for a fact that the more empirical data you have, the more granular and precise the accuracy will be of the indication. This is true in statistics. This is true in any sort of information where you have this type of activity happening. The more information you have, the more accurate the breeding will be. And as time goes on, 
uh, astrology is going to become more accurate because we're going to have a larger base of data from which to draw upon. It's very, very important. Now, what I find to be fascinating about this, as I mentioned to you, is, is the number of people who get along. Now, I know some of my clients. I've got a client who is an Aries, and I've got a client, and he's married to a Cancer. So that's Aries is a fire sign, Cancer is a water sign, okay? Interesting. So you figure fire and water, that's just not going to work. And it doesn't, typically on the surface. You look at those two, you'd say, you're in for a tough, you're in for a tough row. But they've been married for 35 years. They get along famously. Now, why do you think that is? I'll tell you why. In his chart, the man, who's the Aries, who, actually, who's the Cancer, he has an Aries ascendant in his chart. A rising sign is, ascend, is Aries. So that he projects that Aries energy outward, okay? The wife, who's married to him, is an Aries sun. That Aries ascendant, or the rising sign, perfectly matches up with his. And it doesn't cause conflict. But they speak the same language. There's a certain rapport. There's a, a, a real natural understanding, a chemistry that is natural. And you can tell this with your, with your friends and your family. There are some people you just get along with better. There's no question about it. And you wonder why. If you knew why, and if you looked at the astrology at the time, you'd be able to see it's there. It's so clear. And this is what fascinates me about astrology. It really is about the precision. And the precision can only come from a true astrology reading. This is where it really comes down to. And it doesn't matter where you get that. But it's available. When you know your birth place, your birth time, and your birth date, you'll have an amazing amount of accuracy. Most people just figure, ah, I'm a Gemini, I know what I am, and they told me I was going to you know, do well at work this week. Well, you know, I had a good week. And so therefore, it gets discounted very quickly. But if that Gemini knew that in their chart they had Sagittarius rising, they might have a different approach to how their life was because they may have seen things come across their life in different ways. And it's very, very accurate in that regard, especially when it comes to matchmaking and making major decisions. Major decisions in life can be dictated by, one, by knowing these two points. When you know two data points, things become that much better. Matter of fact, the statistic is if you know these two pieces of your astrology chart, and I can tell you them if you contact me, if you know these two pieces of your astrology chart, you'll have 80 to 85 percent accuracy in the astrology reading. So, or the, or the astrology for the day, or the astrology for the year, or the astrology for the month. So when I go and I look at astrology, wherever I look, and I know astrology, I look at my own charts all the time, I can tell exactly what's going to be happening. And it absolutely works every time. Now, I'm not trying to evangelize. I, you don't believe it, that's fine. But I'm telling you, if you run the experiment yourself, and it can do this very easily, you can just go onto the web, to a website, find out what your ascendant is, or the rising sign. So you would Google ascendant astrology, or rising sign astrology, and you'd figure out how to get that. It's based on the time. Now, some people don't know what time they were born. This happens in uh, sometimes overseas. People from Africa, don't, they don't have uh, their, their actual time. Or some foreign countries, people sometimes from Russia, don't have their actual time. It depends upon the hospital. But oftentimes in the United States, people do go to town halls or they go to the hospitals or, again, go to the source, <laughs> your mother or your father. They will definitely know because they were there. And, and when they can tell you, uh, even if they say, I think it was 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Even with that, you can still get closer to the actual information. It's that precision that is vital when it comes to the rising sign and understanding astrology. That opens up a wealth of information that you did not have before. And that is part of the reason why astrology has not been taken seriously. Any astrologer will tell you that when you know more information, you can hone in very clearly. I do readings for people all the time. And when I know the actual aspects and the details of their chart with precision, I can get into details that are very, very precise. Now, why did I become an astrologer? I was about uh, 20 years old and I was working in uh, this place and a woman had just started that day at my job and I happened to have lunch with her because she was new and I wanted to meet her and she seemed interesting. So I started talking to her and we got on the subject and she said, asked, out of the blue, she said, do you know your birth date and your birth time? And I said, well, of course I know my birthday. She says, ah, but do you know your birth time? And actually I did because I had my birth certificate. 
on my birth certificate, I could see the time that I was born. Well, I gave it to her, right? And this was a long, long time ago, back in the 70s. I gave it to her. And about two days later, she came back in with five or six pages of handwritten analysis of who I was, and I was totally dumbstruck because this person knew me better than anybody had ever known me in my life to that point in time, even perhaps Brett and I did. It showed me characteristics. It showed my assets. It showed my weaknesses. It showed my strengths. It showed my liabilities. All of those were clearly evident in what I was given in the chart. And as a result of knowing that, that's when I first got hooked on astrology. It became a, um, a, an enormous wealth of information about me. And then when you get into predictive astrology, which I'll talk about some other time, you can see how the granularity and the validity of what's happening in the astrology chart becomes incredibly informational, incredibly accurate. And when you know that, you can make decisions accordingly. Now, we all have free will, obviously, but if you have free will, you have to know when to act on it. If you know, if you have information ahead of time, you can act accordingly. As I always say, as the great wheel turns, we are best informed, we are best prepared, actually, when we are best informed. As the great wheel turns, we are best prepared when we are best informed. So if you know that you're going to be uh, looking for a home refinance, perhaps, or you know that you want to uh, decide about starting a relationship with somebody, or you know that your career is not quite where you want it to be. And a, a skilled astrologer can help you with the timing, because there are significant events in the timing that happen. Now, I host a weekly radio show uh, called Turning of the Wheel, and uh, I have people who call in from around the world uh, who are listening via the web, and all, I've never met them before. I've never seen them before. And they give me their birth date, place, and time, and I can tell them exactly what's going on. Okay? Now, this one woman had called me up uh, a while ago, and she said to me, I said, well, you know, you've got it fantastic. Uh, you know, this is a really, you're in a very good situation. I didn't give her any details. I said, uh, but actually, I said, you've got great aspects for a career. I said, are you out doing anything about your career? And she said, well, no, I'm just kind of sitting around the house, you know, waiting to see what happens. And I said, that is the problem. You can't sit around the house and wait. If you know that you have good, uh, a, a good climate for getting a job, you need to be out with your resume. You need to get a new wardrobe. You need to get your hair done. You need to get out there and make yourself known so that people understand that you are hired, hireable at that moment in time. UPS is not going to drive up to your house with an envelope and say, here's a job for you. It doesn't happen like that. But when you're forewarned and you know that the opportunity is good, and this is what's called the occupation sector of your chart. There's a piece of your chart that is dedicated just for occupation. An occupation is tied to another part of the chart which has to do with daily work. And that piece of the chart is tied to a piece that has to do with money. So they all three connect. When you know what's happening in those three parts of the astrology map of the you, the individual, you can act accordingly. You can be proactive. And that's where the free will piece comes in. Free will is the ability to take empirical data based on where you are in your life at that time come and roll it into a situation where you are able to act at, with precision. And I have done this all my life, and I've been incredibly fortunate in meeting right people at the right time, filing for refinancing, filing for loans, student loans, um, the medical procedures, um, all sorts of information is there. And it's incredibly useful for people who are in a state of flux or in a state where they're not sure. There's an awful lot of this happening. People are unsure, especially in the, given the current economy. We have a lot of, of, of flux. There's a lot of uncertainty. A lot of people are working longer hours in, in ways that they never used to in the past. And this is a very difficult situation to deal with because it's not the same as it used to be. It's not the same as it used to be. Things at one point in time, you could go and you could get a job and you could predict and you could do whatever you wanted. Now it's much different. Now, oftentimes people have three jobs instead of just one. So knowing this type of information is incredibly valuable because it gives you the ability to act. When you act at the right time, the odds of success are phenomenally rich. They are pungent and rich. And what I mean by that is that the precision is there. It is accurate beyond a doubt. I've made many career decisions in my life. I've made many relationship uh, uh, decisions in my life based on astrology. Some good, 
<laughs> and some bad. But the reason I say that is that even the bad decisions proved out by, via the astrology. They proved out because I knew that extra piece. So I want to review this quickly because we're running out of time. The ascendant is a point in your chart which adds a whole new dimension to the depth of who you are as an individual. You may find that you have a person in your life who you get along with very well, and yet they're not, their elements don't match up as you think they would. And you're like, well, there is water sign, I'm a fire sign, we just, we don't get along. Or an air sign and a water sign, just don't get along. But if that person with the air sign has an air sign in their chart as well that matches up with yours, the ascendant, you're going to get instant chemistry. This is why it's important to know the ascendant. And I can't stress this uh, strongly enough because knowing that one piece, if I do nothing else in my life, I want to be sure that people know about the ascendant. Because when you know about the ascendant, you have incredible amount of, of data. And as I mentioned earlier, as you age, you're going to move into that kind of characteristic. You may always be who you are. You're never going to be different than who you are. And this is an interesting thing about astrology. People ask, can you change... Um, you can't change who you are as an individual, an individual because you're born with a fingerprint that is your DNA and the astrology matches that DNA. This is the thing. It matches it because you're born at a place in time. Psychologist Carl Jung used the example to illustrate astrology. And he was a very devout believer in astrology and a practitioner of astrology. He said that we are like a grape on a vine. And the grape on the vine is tied to the terroir or the, or the surface or the soil, the water, the climate, the sun, the temperature. But that grape on the vine is dictated by a certain time. We've all bought bottles of wine, perhaps, that were be some years are better than others. That's a very common thing in, this, in, in wine. So grapes of one year have a certain characteristic that the grapes on the same vine the next year are completely different because the sun, the soil, the air, the atmosphere, the climate is all changed in that time. This was how Carl Jung described astrology. This was the analogy he used, and it's incredibly accurate. And if we apply it to ourselves, it makes sense. We are born at a place in time, and in that place in time, we have distinct characteristics that are unique to us. Only we have them. Even twins who are born minutes apart have distinctly different characteristics. And I know that for a fact. I've got twins. So I know that this is a fact. So when you know these extra data points, you have empirical data that is incredibly rich and incredibly powerful, and it, it, it just opens up the whole world of astrology dramatically. The Ascendant, A-S-C-E-N-D-A-N-T, the Ascendant, or also look up Rising Sign, R-I-S-I-N-G, Sign, S-I-N, S-I-G-N. Look up that. When you know your Rising Sign, and you can Google this, or you can go to my website, turningofthewheel.com, and figure it out. When you know your Rising Sign, and you know your sun sign each week, whenever you look at your astrology, if you look at it by the day, always set yourself up. Supposing you get it on your cell phone and you read each day, read both characteristics, both of those two pieces of information. And if you get stuck on that, you can contact me and I will help you find another data point that's valuable. But when you have two data points, everything becomes clearer. It's an incredibly valuable thing to know. And it just makes the life of astrology and the, the information of the astrology that much richer. It's really, um, it's fascinating. And you can see these things happening. And people come to me all the time and they say, how can this be true? How can, I said, well, you know, like that woman, you, you know, you have a time coming and the time has come. When the time is right and you're, you act accordingly, this is where free will comes in. When you act accordingly and you're in concert or you're in connection with what's happening in your life, great things come together. It's incredibly rich. So I want you to keep that in mind. Now, my goal in the show is to sort of educate and bring new concepts of astrology to you to sort of make it more valuable to you. There's great things that are going on in astrology. I'm also going to have artists on, and I'm going to do spiritual adventure, which is sort of interesting people who are here to help us evolve, enlighten our lives, enrich in our lives, because there's so much here, and we're only here for a short time. So we might as well take advantage of what is available. And I'm here to do that. And that's part of what my goal is, is to bring astrology to you in an educational manner so you can learn something from it and understand the wealth of information that's at your fingertips. And as I said earlier, as the great wheel turns, we are best prepared when we are best informed.